Hi church, I've really been enjoying the time with our um, small life group that we're having for the summer and this past week we were looking at the subject of patience and the idea that um, some of the times when we need to exercise patience we think that what we're waiting for is for somebody else to change our circumstances. We're having a difficult time with a coworker and we're waiting for the coworker to change. Or we're in the middle of COVID and we're waiting for somebody to give the okay for kids to go back to school or for us to go back to work or for us to be able to get together with family and friends. But what we talked about was the fact that in reality, when we are waiting, ultimately, we are waiting on God because he is the one who is ultimately in control of situations. And so we exercise patience in that time, but we also exercise this kind of spiritual discipline of waiting. And that reminded me of this passage in Psalm 62, which says, my soul wait in silence for God only, for my hope is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, I shall not be shaken. On God, my salvation and my glory rest. The rock of my strength, my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. And just as David, in the midst of the difficult situation that he was in, had to say, my soul wait in silence for God only, sometimes that's what we need to say as well. I need to, I need to quiet myself. I need to wait for God. And I was reminded of this quote by Charles Spurgeon that I have found helpful in the past. Here's what it says. If the Lord Jehovah makes us wait, let us do so with our whole hearts. For blessed are all they that wait for him. He is worth waiting for. The waiting itself is beneficial to us. It tries faith, exercises patience, trains submission, and endears the blessing when it comes. The Lord's people have always been a waiting people. And when you think about that in light of the scripture, Think of people in the Old Testament who were looking forward to the coming of Messiah and waiting for the coming of Messiah. And then you think of us today. We are waiting ultimately for either Jesus' second coming or that time when we go to be with him. We are by nature awaiting people. So I would encourage you today in whatever situation you find yourself, to recognize the waiting that needs to be done as waiting on the Lord. And remember that he is worth waiting for. He has good plans for us. They will result in a good end. Maybe not in the timing that we'd like, maybe not in the exact way that we'd like, but they will result in a good end because he is a good God and he can be trusted.